Hello, welcome to our lesson on solving exponents with variables. We're going to work with pretty familiar square numbers in this video to try and keep it pretty clear on how to solve exponents with variables. Before you start the lesson, you need to know how to work with exponents. You have to understand that a number like 5 raised to the power of 3 is 5 times itself, the base number times itself 3 times. You have to understand that. If you want an, any extra information on positive exponents, you can check out this YouTube video that is also posted there. And for today, we also have to understand a little bit about negative exponents. 5 to the power of negative 3 is the same thing as 1 over 5 to the power of positive 3, represented there. If you need some more help on that before you get started with this, again, click on this video down here, and you'll be able to go to a lesson, a full lesson on negative exponents. I'm going to move forward with the assumption that we have an understanding of positive and negative exponents. So I'm going to work first with positive exponents that have variables. When you're solving an exponent that has a variable, and your variable is the base, in other words, your unknown x value is the base there. There is an official mathy way to solve this, and that is to take the square root of both sides of the equation. The square root of x squared is equal to x, and the square root of 25 is equal to plus or minus 5. Now, that will work if you understand square roots and solving equations using square roots. What I'm going to do is show you a quick shortcut for just a person first learning about square numbers or exponents, I should say. So if you're solving for an exponent and you're not sure how to do square roots yet, then what you're going to do is try and make the left side of the equation look exactly like the right side of the equation. This one here has an exponent of 2. Do we know a number multiplied times itself that will give us 25? Well, yes. 5 to the power of 2 is 5 times 5, which gives us 25. So now I've made the, the right side over here look a little bit more like the left side. x to the power of 2 is equal to 5 to the power of 2, and so I can know that x is equal to 5. This is a bit of a simplified way of solving this not using square roots, just solving based on knowing these numbers. So here's a question for you to solve. You can pause the recording, try and solve this one. a to the power of 2, or a squared, is equal to 81. Welcome back. Hopefully you are back. You've solved this in your notebook, paused the recording, and now we're ready to solve it together. 81 is 9 times 9, or in other words, 9 squared. So a in this case would be equal to 9. So these types of questions where you're making the left side look the same as the right side, it's a helpful way to solve. It's also a shortcut that gets your brain working. So it's a good pattern. With larger numbers, you will need to know how to work with square roots. The next type of question that has a variable with an exponent is when an exponent, like this, is the variable. So 3 to the power of something gives us 81. Guess and check work is pretty good with this. Um, in other words, what I'd start out with is like 3 to the power of 1. Well, that equals 3. 3 to the power of 2. That's 3 times 3. That's 9. 3 to the power of 3, which is 3 times 3 times 3. That's 27. And 3 to the power of 4. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 gives us 81. Therefore, x, our variable, is equal to 4. So when you're given a question like this, where your variable is the exponent, you can use guess and check work to try and find your answer. This works best with smaller numbers. If you get a really large number, this could take a long time. I understand that. But for introduction lessons on exponents, if we're solving exponents with variables, this is a good method for a lot of the introductory level numbers. Try this one out. Pause the recording. Pause the video. Go ahead and try and solve this one. Tell me what x is equal to. Well, I guess you can't really tell me what it's equal to. Anyway, 
Uh, 5 to the power of 1 is 5. 5 to the power of 2 is 25. We've used that number before. And 5 to the power of 3 is 125. Because 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. So therefore, in this one, x is equal to 3. All right. Now we're going to switch over to talking about negative exponents. Negative exponents are fractions, essentially. A negative exponent means that you're moving the number up and down. If it's written out regularly, it moves down to the denominator. If it's in the denominator, it moves up to the top. Negative exponents just make them, the exponents move, or make the entire term here move up or down. So what we're going to do is try and make, again, the left side look exactly like the right side. I know x to the power of negative 2 is the same thing as 1 over x to the power of positive 2. I took that and I moved it into the denominator and made my exponent positive. That's what I'm going to do with this. Now I have x to the power of 2 is equal to 100. That looks a lot like what we just did. I know 10 to the power of 2 is equal to 100. So I could switch 100 equals 10 to the power of 2, or I can just write 10 to the power of 2 is 100. x is equal to 10. That's how we solve this type of question, where we're given the exponent, but not the base value. So we're trying to find our base value. It is equal to 10. Here's a question for you to solve. What would I put in for x that would give me a value of 1 over 64? Did you follow these steps? Did you make the left side look like the right side? Or was there a different way that worked for you? Did you know, oh, 8 to the power is 264. That negative means it's in the denominator. I can do this in my head. And if you're getting to the point where you can manipulate them in your head, that's fantastic. All right, that's a great step towards fully understanding positive and negative exponents. That's wonderful. So here are the steps that I did. I moved x to the power of negative 2 means 1 over x to the power of positive 2. And I know that 8 to the power of 2 is 64. Therefore, x is equal to 8 in this question. All right, the last type of question that we're going to go over today is one where you have an exponent that is unknown here. So I need to figure out what goes in that exponent, and I've got a fraction on the other side, which means that my exponent is going to be negative. So there are two parts to this. The first part is that I know my, my exponent's going to be negative because it has to go into the denominator, or it has to move down. This has to move down, so I'm going to have a negative exponent. The other part is to say 7 to the power of what gives me 49. I know 7 raised to the power of 2 gives me 49. So I take these two parts and I put them together. I have 7 to the power of 2, which gives me 49. And I know my exponent needs to be negative because it went from here down into the denominator. So those two parts moving up and down and 7 to the power of 2 gives me 49, will help me to know that my value for x needs to be negative 2. I need to both move it down to the denominator and raise it to the power of 2. So I look at this in two steps. That's the way I encourage you to do it. It's the way it makes sense for me. Um, I hope that that made sense for you. I do have a question for you to solve as well using these same steps. 4 to the power of something gives me 1 over 64. Go ahead and pause the recording, solve that one. Welcome back. Hopefully you pause the recording, solve that one in your notebook or, or on a paper somewhere. Or maybe you were able to do it in your head. The first step, again, what I do, I move it down. That exponent needs to be negative for it to move into the denominator. The second one is that I have to figure out 4 to the power of what gives me 64. I know 4 to the power of 1 won't work, and 4 to the power of 2 won't work. So I'm going to keep going until I find it. I'm using that guess and check that we talked about earlier. 4 to the power of 3 gives me 64. 
That's not one that I maybe had memorized. So checking that using this guess and check is a good way to find out. Now we're going to raise 4 to the power of 3, which gives us 64. We'll combine together the two ideas. One is that it's a negative, and two is that the value is 3 to give us our final answer of x is equal to negative 3. Hope that lesson has been helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.